Hi, so today I wanted to talk to you about API schemas. A lot of people get confused with what a schema is. GraphQL uses a schema, Open API is a schema, and a lot of people get confused by a, what a schema is and what a schema does. There are a lot of things out there, uh, like for instance, RAML and Swagger and Open API and API Blueprint and they're all written differently and they all effectively do kind of different things, but at the same time, they all do the same thing. They are a duplication of IO state. And what do I mean when I say IO state? Well, IO stands for input and output. And what is the input and output of APIs? Well, it's the request and the response. And the request and the response for APIs meet smack dab in your API server, where they smack together at your business logic, which in most MBC frameworks is your controller. Model view controller, it's the controller. And so I have right here uh, to demonstrate a classic Spring Boot or a, a Java controller. Um, and you can see right here at pop book controller where it shows your request mapping, which is the path API book, and where it shows your get mapping, and you can see further down here, a put mapping, a patch mapping, a post mapping, and how they're effectively called with an ID or things like that, um, and uh, uh, how they're uh, mapped internally, find by ID, etc. Um, and even response statuses. This is where the calls actually end up. And um, other frameworks may handle them with what they call services, but how does a service get called? With the controller. Um, so I, I want to clear this up initially so that everybody understands. Your URL and um, your input and output come to this point in your API server to your controller where the request is handled and it outputs a resource, which eventually becomes the response, back out before I go any further into talking about API schemas. Okay, but let's talk about schemas now. So initially, a client browser makes a request, and that comes in the form of a URL, URI, and uh, variables, um, plus things like a token and the headers and, and all of that. Then that goes to um, the gateway um, GraphQL server um, and load balancer. I, I won't really go into the load balancer or anything because it's not completely pertinent to what we're talking about today. I'm just going to go straight into this. Um, and API Gateway and GraphQL basically handle a lot of the same thing, the, the path, the request method, request data, uh, response data, um, API Gateway handles content type and things like that. But as you see, it's, it's a lot of the exact same data. Um, so it's, it's not that dissimilar. Um, but if you go over the documents, they're, they're they're really fairly similar, but they act as a layer. Both of them are layers on top of your APIs. Both of them are. Um, regardless of how you think about them, you have to have existing API servers um, that these sit on top of. Then um, this gets routed to your API server, where the API server handles all of that data itself, plus it's your tokens, roles, um, version, mock data, so on and so forth. But as you see from before, GraphQL and all that data from their schemas are a duplicate of this data in your API server that is your IO state. Um, so again, I'm stressing this very, very firmly. They are duplicates of all of this data at your controllers or in your services at your API server. Uh, it is 
very important that you understand that your API schema duplicates. It does not synchronize. It duplicates all of that data at your API server. Um, then your API server um, creates a response uh, from a resource, most commonly your database, sends it back out to message queue. Message queue sends it back to your client browser. Um, very, very basic. But this is the thing that um, I want to make sure everybody understands. So API server is the centralized location for your IO state, for all of that data. That's where all of this is coming from. From That's where the response goes in. That's the final place of the response. And that's or, or of the request. I apologize. That's the final location of the request. And that's where the response is created that goes out. And that's where GraphQL and API Gateway are creating all that data in their schema to match. They're trying to match all that data in the API server. But it's unsynchronized. And the reason I say it's unsynchronized is because at any point in time, if the API server goes down, changes that data, and comes back up, boom, they're instantly out of sync. Those data overlaps are occurring due to duplication and only because of duplication, because they're trying to duplicate all that data at those endpoints. And those endpoints are the, the controller methods. The duplication is not synchronization because synchronization would happen when that server came back up. All, those in, all that data in those schemas would instantly match, but there is no synchronization. So as a result of that, that lack of synchronization is causing inaccuracies in GraphQL and the API gateway. They may have elevated privileges. The endpoints may not match up, and, and suddenly you're going to be getting errors every place. Um, they are just copies of that data. And that's what they are. That is what a, an API schema is. GraphQL is just copying all that data at the API server. Same thing with API Gateway. It's just copying all of that. It can't synchronize it. Now, when you see people saying, oh, we sync uh, our schema, we sync our schema. Yes, they're syncing their GraphQL schema, and that's it. API Gateway is just syncing their API Gateway schema, and that's it. It's not syncing it with the API server. If it's syncing it, what it's doing is they're saying you can change it by hand <laughs> and then sync it back up. <laughs> That's what they're saying. They're not saying that at any point in time that API server is going to sync with your gateway or sync with GraphQL. It doesn't. That's not the way it happens. Um, however, if you saw my, uh, my, uh, a video from the other week uh, where I actually did do that. Let's see if I can pull this up on YouTube. And go to my content. Yeah, on my content, um, the API dyna dynamic API schema reloading, I rewrote the API pattern so that does happen. So that your API server can sync that on the fly without reloading the API server. You don't even have to take the API server down. It will resync everything on the fly. Um, I don't know why people don't do this. It drives me crazy. Um, I have uh, helped a lot of people with this, but you need to do this <laughs> so that you have better security, and so that it, it's just for the security alone. Um, you need to do that. So that's what API schemas are. That's wherein the problem lies. That's the big security nightmare that everybody has. Try to reload your schemas on the fly, people. <laughs> if you have problems with this, contact me. I'll help you. I don't have a problem with it. Um, as always, I love questions. Um, get in touch. Um, I'm always here. Uh, take care.